Sorry about that. Okay. Well, good. good afternoon and welcome to this very special show where I'm talking to Michael Q. Todd. Uh, good afternoon, Michael. Hi, Stephen. Thank you uh, so much. It's, okay, uh, it's a good afternoon for you there. I'm in uh, Tokyo. I heard you asking where I was before. I'm in, in Tokyo. I, I did, yes. All right. Okay. And you are eight hours ahead of us, really. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, welcome to everyone who's joined us today. Um, we're going to learn uh, more about uh, Crowdify and Crowdify Coin and Ethereum. Uh, so let's start at the beginning, Michael. Um, Crowdify. What is Crowdify? Originally, we started as a crowdfunding site um, with a WordPress blog um, theme um, for crowdfunding at uh, crowdify.fund, but we struggled to uh, gain any traction against the giants, the Kickstarter and the Indiegogo. Um, mm -hmm. it was, uh, and it dawned on me that we needed to um, build some community around uh, what we were doing to um, get that kind of support. So the um, other thing was that I had another site called the Web Tools Wiki, um, which we've got about four and a half thousand pages about different internet tools things like that and I thought well how can I put the two of them together and no. they're both on WordPress both pretty slow and clunky sites and uh, obviously without any um, ability to make any kind of community forum or anything like that so I uh, think we have to uh, spend a couple hundred thousand dollars building our own website basically it was like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> kind of dawned on me about uh, 18 months ago so we've been doing that so uh, it's uh, what we've got now is a, a product of uh, probably 18 months of um, of work, uh, mainly done um, or led by um, Nathan Sen in uh, El Dorado, Arkansas, of all places. All right, so um, we we haven't met yet, uh, Nathan and uh, and I, my co-founder, but uh, mm -hmm. we uh, we are going to meet in about a month in uh, in California. So it's going to be very exciting. Good. So we're um, Got our own website now, um, and people are using it and starting to do very diff different things than we ever expected that uh, we were going to have. Um, and we haven't even got the crowdfunding back into it yet, but we're about to um, do that by basically white labeling some software from a place called Crowd Engine that, uh, that okay. we use. And uh, we're going to get into um, equity crowdfunding, which is very popular right. in the UK where you are, but. Uh, not so popular with our friends in America yet, but uh, it's starting to infiltrate the uh, Americas in about six different states. We're going to be able to operate that system there. So it's exciting okay. times. Because we, we both come from, uh, I mean, 2005, 2006, we were on Academy, which was where we learned to network, wasn't it? Uh, bring people together and actually get people involved in the project. Yeah. Um, Thomas and Penny Powell were real, real groundbreaking um, people that are much more um, futuristic than a lot of people give them credit for, uh, for what they did with the Academy. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, Indeed. So. I mean, I, I would say it was Facebook before Facebook. So, because it's has everything that Facebook's got now, the Academy mm. had then. Mm. Uh, but the technology's moved on. And with it, we've, we've had the, uh, the next step, step uh, was Bitcoin. Now, to the I, I know nothing about Bitcoin. Can, can you explain what Bitcoin is? Because I'm not alone. Um, I, I was chatting with uh, with a guy in uh, called Chris Colling. I think he was on the Academy as well, and he, he's from Stranraer up in the way up north of you. And uh, he he did a um, what, what do you call it? The autocorrect today when we were chatting, and he said, uh, "I'm just taking my first baby steps with bicycling." And uh, right. he, he was trying to say Bitcoin, but it changed into bicycling. And yeah. it made me think that actually bicycling and Bitcoin are actually very similar because okay. when you first get on a bicycle, um, you usually fall off and graze your knees or your, your elbows or worse. And uh, But then you uh, next time you do it, oh, well, you wondered why it was so difficult in the first place. And uh, it's something that you never forget how to do. Uh, right. So Bitcoin is very similar. So um, my wife, Yoriko, she calls it the wazoo. Right? You're sending money into the wazoo and hoping that it lands somewhere. And uh, so when you transfer your first Bitcoin from somewhere, um, it's quite a breathtaking moment and you want to contact the people back and check, did you get it? Did you get it? Like and now 
Yeah. Now when you now when we send it, we realize that they must get it because there's nothing else that can happen. <laughs> so right. when, when it comes to and it and it's becomes just a natural part of our lives and we're sending it backwards and forwards with a huge whole lot of people every day and uh it's very simple and uh it's like getting on a bicycle as it is for us now. So um but with Bitcoin it is uh you, you have to imagine that every transaction has its own piece of code and okay. it's all it's all built on these blocks. So you're basically sending from one block to another um with a unique um transaction code. Um and uh it's it's just basically send, uh, sending a transaction from one one block to another. So um, it's uh, yeah, it, it's, it's really very I simple mean, and easy process when when you when you sort of nail it down to that. Okay, so everybody has a, a what's what's known as a wallet. Is that correct? We should get Stephen here. Hi, Stephen. Thanks a lot for coming by. Stephen's um, yeah. probably a bit more of an expert at it, at uh, at this than me. Um, everyone has a wallet and uh, you can have as many wallets as you like and, and you can uh, steer, um, keep your coins in there. Um, what, what a lot of people realize is that, don't realize is that it's not really done by coin um, by coin. There's um, eight decimal places of coin. So one Bitcoin is worth about $450 at the moment. Um, you can actually own less than a cent worth of Bitcoin and it can still be, you know, like down to the last eighth decimal place, point zero 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 one of a Bitcoin. And you can transfer that around as well. Right. So it, it's secure. I mean, it's, it's a virtual currency which people can use to pay each other. Yep. And the, the thing that I found interesting is that you, you don't need a bank account. It's not don't need tied into the banks at all. And, uh, so and here, the, here is the opportunity we've, we've identified really with Crowdfy that we didn't really realize that we had at the start uh, was that there are about five and a half billion people on the planet that are not as privileged as us. They do not have access mm -hmm. to PayPal and crowd and uh, and uh, credit cards and even a bank account. Or maybe a few more than that have access to a bank account, but PayPal and credit card. There's really not that many more than a billion that have access to this. So what what we have done is give access to these people to be able to do e-commerce and make peer-to-peer -peer payments to each other for services and, and things like that um, via Bitcoin. So this, uh, this is going to presumably empower a lot of people to Escape, escape the shackles of poverty uh, from a, a lot of different countries that uh, are kind of in a cycle of poverty at the moment because they can't uh, do anything. So now, now someone even in uh, deepest, darkest, landlocked Africa who's got access to a, a mobile phone, which, which most parts of Africa have now, they can sell American goods to American people um, with right. Bitcoin, by use of Bitcoin. And get paid and okay, so uh, do something with it. An international currency. Now, who are uh, Ethereum? Ethereum is to understand the Ethereum. You have to understand what Bitcoin is actually built on, and this is the these blocks, okay. the blockchain. Um, yep. So, Ethereum is an extension of the, the thinking of uh, Bitcoin. And again, uh, Stephen uh, has probably got, he's been going to these Ethereum meetups in Australia and learning a lot about more about it than me. But Ethereum well, takes computing and the internet to a different level because it sets up a network of computers that talk to each other. And it's not really the internet. It, it's a different thing, and they Ethereum is built on a whole different browser called a Mist browser, okay. which is which is in testing at the moment. But if you can imagine that the original browser was actually invented around about 1987, which is eight years before Windows 95, so yeah. they they didn't know that we were going to have all these windows stacked up and opened when we were using the computer when they made the original browser so it's kind of obsolete technology and i think you you as a uh, as a long term um, computer user and, and programmer stephen you you understand what i'm saying here is that yeah. that the browser is not really suited for how how we're using the um, computer at the moment so the mist browser is uh, is an answer for this and everything's down the left hand side of the um, of your page 
and mm -hmm. you're more coding into the browser than, uh, than than just putting things into it now. So you can do a wide range of things with the um, with the uh, with the browser, and it's uh, it's got much more exciting possibilities and. It's decentralized. So a, a big company like Apple or Amazon or Facebook or something, they, they can still do, do well um, in, in the MIST browser and with Ethereum, but they're not going to be able to dominate things as they do now. And people are going to have an identity. Um, well, we already have an identity. Um, and we have an Ethereum address uh, on in Ethereum. Everyone has their own unique Ethereum address. And this is decentralized, and uh, people have uh, more privacy and less privacy, really, because it's uh, it, it's a whole different concept, and um, it's it's a whole different show on itself. Um, I'm loading up some videos as a resource um, at michaelqtodd.com forward slash Ethereum. Uh, it's a good place uh -huh. to start um, to start understanding about it. So. It's it's a long and difficult process to get your head around this, and it's uh, it's taken me about at least nine months of study to really start to identify the possibilities. Yeah, I understand. No, but you but through Ethereum, you, you are in pre-launch of the Crowdify coin. And um, what what we've done with uh, with our coin is that it's built on Ethereum, and the if Ethereum being, being something different from the internet and being something different from um, the, the traditional way of thinking is not really meant to be uh, used with the internet. So I think we're the first people that have built an Ethereum coin that is actually able to be used uh, on the on, in the internet browser. So there's been quite a lot of development in what we're doing because the danger was, of course, to get too far ahead and uh, it's going to take some time for people to adjust uh, to move into the Ethereum space, possibly six months, possibly a year, maybe even two years or something like that. So there was some danger that uh, we can, um, yeah, as Stephen says now, your reputation is tied to your ETH address, your Ethereum address. Exactly. It's a reputation network, which uh, you like as well, Stephen, uh, the, uh, the respect uh, thing and everything like this. You'll, you'll, you'll like this. Uh, so, um, uh, our coin can do a number of things. Um, okay. For example, when you pay someone with an Ethereum coin, you can write a contract um, that will send money to a whole lot of different other people. This is called a side contract on the blockchain mm -hmm. or a smart contract. Right. So with Bitcoin, where you can just do one dimensional sending money from one place to another, with Ethereum and and smart smart contract which you can use our coin for and you can't use for a traditional bitcoin or any other coin you can pay a whole lot of different people at the same time right so okay. if, you, if you can imagine a uh, someone going into something like itunes and buying a song there's the singer there might be a songwriter there might be a lyricist, lyricist there might be a um, uh, like some um, music that's been sampled into the song as well they need to be paid there's a manager there's um, the recording studio where the song was made, the, the drummer and the bass player or the pianist um, or the vocalist, they all might be paid different amounts. Um, and traditionally, some accountant would have had to say, oh, we made, uh, we, we sold uh, half a million songs this month. We're going to divvy it all up and pay all these people out. Whereas yeah. with, with our coin, um, we can actually facilitate the payment to all those different people at different levels, different percentages of the uh, the price of the music at two dollars, they can all get paid a different amounts at the point of sale instantaneously. Okay. Uh, so, it, it, so exciting, it, exciting times. That's uh, that's one thing that we are going to be able to do. So, uh, yeah, it is it is extremely exciting times. And what we've done with Crowdify is that um, when you go into our site, you, you might notice that you've got a login with Twitter and you've, you've got a um, your identity in our site is attached to your um, your Twitter account. So okay. what we've done is the uh, Ethereum address and your Ethereum wallet um, for the Crowdify coin um, is attached to Twitter as well. So we're going to be able to track who owns our coin by their Twitter address. 
so um and uh by their twitter handle and we're going to be able to see um what people are doing with the coin and we're going to be able to facilitate payments and messages um that send money via twitter via tweets both uh direct messages and uh, open you know public tweeting so um yeah all, all stuff that people have not done before so we've, we've got a team of um um, eight programmers working on our site at the moment, but three of them are, are specialists actually using the coin, um, developing the coin, sorry. So uh, they're in Australia, Tom and Barry and Felix, uh, and Felix in New Zealand, are like myself. They're actually uh, working every day developing the coin. And in the last couple of days, they actually uh, had finished off the development of the coin, which is extremely exciting. And right. we're starting to think, I realize that we can do things that we didn't. Um, realized that we were going to do before so for example we could be a coin for a multinational company that's making payments to a, in a whole lot of different currencies at different time um, say every week to a whole lot of different staff where they're having to perform a whole lot of transactions to do that at the moment and take someone's taking a lot of time and trouble and they've got to check if the staff have done the work and all this kind of thing now but now they can write a smart contract, for example, where a member of staff fills in, fills in, completes their timesheet for the week, which signs mm -hmm. off saying that they've done their work for the week. This smart contract will unlock a payment that is already sitting ready for them on the blockchain, and this payment will automatically be made. The company doesn't have to do anything with it um, to um, for this payment to happen. So we, we realize that we can do things like this. So we can actually be. Uh, Kind of a, um, a banking system for for these kind of companies, and we, we already developed this, and we didn't even know we developed it. So we, we've you've got to you've got to use your imagination and think as wide and as openly and, and as big as you can when you're dealing with Ethereum, because the, the limits of what you can can do are, are limitless. There's, there's no limit to, to what you can do. It's just out. Well, I just what in in relation to Ethereum, I just put up the uh, the link uh, to the uh video you mentioned the other day um oh this is the one of the consensus people in new york yeah yeah this is a very good one this is this explains about the music um thing as well and explains uh where things are going this is actually about four months old now and they've actually moved on a lot uh there um that, that's okay. a group of developers that are working together in uh in a place in new york i think they've they said in that video they've got about 60 people they've actually got about um 120 or something now um yeah is very good and this is what the crowdify coin is based on yeah yeah uh no i'm not going to play the whole of it but I, I don't think these guys have ever thought of building a coin all right okay okay but this is this is the technology that you're using one of the craziest things that we're doing is, I just listened to this this morning. Okay. So you can see all that, all the computers are yep. locked together. Yep. I got it. Okay. Well, well, if I if I close that for the moment, but if you, if anyone wants to watch the the full video, then the link is in the right hand side, and uh, you can watch that, and it will give you an insight into uh, 
this exciting world. Now, uh, if if people want to get involved in the, the Crownify coin, how can they do that? Um, we, we just started selling the the coin last week, um, and the um, the we, we actually made more progress than we thought we were going to make in the last week. So the guys in Australia have got very excited and uh, in taking uh, days off their day job to get things finished at the moment. Um, one of the things that you can't believe is that, that uh, a lot of my friends and uh, especially my lawyer friends uh, cannot get their head around is that we're paying um, you know quite, quite a lot of money every day to these developers and, and programming um, this coin. And yep. it's there for the world to use <laughs> once we've done it. They said, well, how are you uh, protecting your IP as well? I said, well, this is a very interesting thing is that it's the opposite thinking of that is that everything is open source that you do with Ethereum. It, you, okay. it, any, uh, any code, we've got access to any code that other people have written. So there was actually a template uh, for a coin that we, we've that we worked on that someone else had developed. But um, we... Uh, are basically building a coin that can be used by anybody in the world in the future as well. So it's um, Skip's got some interesting uh, questions um, about right. what we're doing okay. a little bit. Um, so Skip's saying if you're functioning as a bank, we have to sometimes insurance. Well, we are, we, we're not actually handling the money, um, Skip, so we're basically actually just facilitating the ability to make the transactions that the money doesn't actually pass through our hands. So when I said we'd, we'd be a, something like a bank, it's, we won't be actually be anything like that. We're, we're more of a merchant service uh, um, facilitator by actually having developed the code so people are just using our code really they're not they're not really using um, we don't have any can we won't ever be able to attach the money or anything what about government oversight or that moment's government um, poking around that kind of thing's finished <laughs> they, they don't they don't have any um, they won't have any influence or anything like that on on, uh, on the ethereum um, network that they, they weren't the nobody has any influence over everyone else everyone's got their own separate identity and uh, there won't be any poking around or control by anyone else anymore on, on, online. The, um, the the thing, another thing with our coin is the security aspect of it is completely different from Bitcoin. Whereas Bitcoin can be stolen, can be people can hack into um, Bitcoin exchanges or someone else's okay. Bitcoin account or wallet. Um, they can't do that with our coin because every coin has got its own separate code, and if one of them get and we can trace the transactions back on this blockchain where what's happened with that coin from from where it's been used and we can actually delete that code and replace it with right. another coin okay. so we can replace the the coins if anyone ever says they get stolen we just delete the coin and and give them another coin so um it's uh it's a wonderful system and, and to feel so secure about what we're doing and we, we are that we don't have any danger of being hacked or or having any um security breaches so we've um We've made our coin now, and we we started out um, selling them at five cents um, about ten days ago, about five uh, five cents each. And mm -hmm. where I, I imagine for most of the people out there, including you, Stephen, it is very difficult to um, get the concept of like how to go and buy a co cup of coffee or to uh, no. to pay someone for getting a job done on Fiverr for five dollars or something with Bitcoin. Because you're, yeah. you're constantly having to um, do a calculation of wherever it is at the moment, like it dropped by two two percent just uh, overnight, um, about 24 okay. hours ago, right? Mm -hmm. Dropped from 460 um, to about 440 extremely quickly, a two percent drop. So it's not very good for a merchant with small trading margins to hold on to that to a significant amount of money. And imagine if you were paying someone and, and you sent money to them, your staff member or something. And then the next morning, just because they hadn't cleared their account out and transferred it into like fiat currency, they lost 2% of their wages overnight, for example. Right. So yeah. we're aiming at having a stabilized price for our coin, which I don't right. think has ever been done before either. So we're, we're right. aiming to track pretty closely to the US dollar eventually. But to get up to that level, we have to build from somewhere and we have to keep adding different um, products and services into um, Crowdify to be able to justify the price of the coin and get enough interest in it so that people are going to use it um, to be able to access discounts and um, and do different things with the coin. So we're constantly adding in new um, products and services like we've just added in a mind mapping platform um, into the site where, where usually people would have had to pay. It's a project management mind mapping where you can mind map with um, other people. 
think you'll okay. also be interested. For example, that's a service that we offer, and we just in improved our events area, and now people can make payments for events in our event area, like Eventbrite, and, and they can give people a discount if they use Crowdify coin, for example. So we're, okay. we're adding all these products and services that people can do, and once they do that, the, the hope is that thousands of people will want to hold on to two or three hundred dollars worth of Crowdify coin in their wallet um, just because they're going to be using it for different things. So I think if you remember on the Empire Cred uh, with the Vs is, is a similar concept to what they were thinking of there. So people would hold on to a certain amount of the currency because they don't want to be going and having to go through the process of having to buy it every time they want to do it. They'll, they'll hold a certain amount in their wallet. So what really we are aiming at doing is having more and more people holding that two or three hundred dollars of Crowdify coin in their Ethereum wallet. And uh, it's just a case of um, getting more and more of these people involved and the price will you know, naturally go up because of that. So yeah. we're, we're aiming at getting to a price of um, a dollar, around about a dollar initially uh, for the coin. And that is going to be about a three month process of, of the coin going up one or two cents uh, a day. And uh, sometimes obviously going down a little bit if someone wants wants to come and speculate it on it and sell it, we don't have much protection against that, apart from the fact that we can limit the amount of Ethereum, uh, of that Crowdify coin that people can own. Because as right. I said before, okay. we, can track, we can track it. So we're going to um, have it so that no um, Twitter account can, ha can own more than 10,000 um, coins. So we're not going to be um, suspect to... Um, people um, crashing the price of our coin by buying, say, half a million of it and right. okay, selling, yeah. them, selling, them, selling them all at one point and crashing the price down because we want to we want to build something that looks stable to a merchant and is easy for people to understand. And initially we want to, and we also don't want some speculators coming in as a group or as one person and buying a huge amount of it and pumping the price way up very quickly and making a huge profit from it. We want our friends and the people like like yourself and the people that have bothered to listen and now and the people that have been using our site already. We've got about, I don't know, 1,500 users or something in our site. We want to, mm -hmm. we want them to make a little bit of money out of this coin and start using it in our site and testing it out and seeing what they can do with it, this kind of thing, gradually getting more confidence with it and using it. So we want um, these people to actually be buying the coin now as it rises in price and perhaps they can sell a little bit of it on the way up and, and take a little bit of a profit um, because of the time that they've been yeah. put in, testing it right. and everything, they deserve to take some of the profits from it. And Stephen uh, that's on here is one of the people that's doing that with us at the moment. So thank you, Stephen, and everyone else who's uh, trying out the coin. I, I put the price up. At the moment, we're putting the price up in a controlled way, um, about uh, a cent or two um, every week. And we're going to keep doing that until um, January, uh, sorry, June the 15th. And then it's going to go on to the open market at uh, at 30 cents a coin on, on June the 15th. And this is what Ethereum did exactly the same thing as they did themselves with their own price for um, EFO, which is ETH. So now the price of that has gone up to about $14 or so. But we're not going to do anything like that because but a lot of people are buying that to use for different things, but we don't expect to be quite as popular as they are. But um, they did start their price at one cent and then go up to 30 and then they went out, went out to the public. So we're, we're trying to follow a similar path of what they did and use the same process that they, they did. So it's already been done like this successfully. So we, we, we're just basically uh, following the footsteps of that and trying to be as responsible as possible about it by not um, crashing the price down, which we're not the first people to build our own coin and our own economy and everything like this uh, as a club or as a community. And there's been um, quite a few other people have done that this year, and I've actually participated in it. But what they've done is go in and buy a huge, um, go and sell a huge amount of coins off to their community and get a whole buzzer going about it going and taking the price yeah. up, say, from $0.05 cents to $3 or $2 or something like this. And then when they get up to that point, they've sold millions of dollars worth of it and crashed the price yeah. down. And a lot of people have been burned and lost money um, that were actually their loyal followers and testers and things like that at the start, and it's created a lot of bad will. Um, we're really aiming not to do this. And so we're, we're actually going to operate some kind of like a central bank strategy where is with the British pound or the, or the euro or something that you're familiar with, 
they yeah. usually do not let, let their coin fluctuate more than one percent up or down every day but they put in buy or sell parameters around their coin every day so okay. once once we go onto the open market at 30 cents on june the 15th we are going to put these buy and sell parameters around our coin so if people come in and try and buy a whole lot of them really fast we start selling a whole lot of them to counter that and yep. we and vice versa if someone starts selling a whole lot of them we'll buy a whole lot back um, and this is going to be done with bitcoin so okay. people are going to buy and sell our coin with bitcoin and we will operate our own exchange in our own site plus we'll um, release our coin onto different exchanges so there's a whole lot of different exchanges um, that these coins are bought and sold on that you're probably not aware mm -hmm. of yet but the main, one, the main one of this is um, is called um, Bittrex and there's uh, Polyonex and there's Catapult coin and there's, there's quite a few different exchanges okay. that we can, yeah. we can list on and they've got to accept our coin that it's a genuine coin but we don't anticipate any trouble with that so we we'll probably release the coin onto about six different exchanges and people will be able to purchase it and um, and sell it uh, against either Bitcoin or some other kind of cryptocurrency uh, on those exchanges. So this is kind of how the whole process will work out over the next uh, month or so. And after June the 1st, uh, 15th, I say it'll, it'll be on the open market for people to buy and sell. But if they want to, um, kind of um, get it at an early price, uh, now is a good time to do it. So, right. so for, for the moment then, the Cratify coin is kept in an Ethereum wallet. Yep. The current price is uh, seven, seven cents. cents. Yeah. It will go up to 30 cents before it goes public. Yeah. When it goes public, people can buy Cratify coin by exchanging for Bitcoin or yeah, they, 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 can, they can do it. They can do that now. They can buy it. Um, they can even buy it with PayPal at the moment, or right, okay, um, yeah. or yeah. or with Bitcoin at the moment. But at the moment, we're just operating a manual system with that. But we've um, set up a sales page. So actually, on June the first, um, we, we could run that sales page at the moment. But we're more interested in um, in reaching out to making trying to make sure that everyone in our community actually knows what we're doing so they can all buy a little bit of it and start testing it out we're actually going to put it out to the public um, in a controlled way so that it doesn't get speculated on heavily from june the 1st to the 15th there's going to be a like a 15 day um, process with a, a public sales page where um, people will just buy it with bitcoin but they won't be able they won't be able to sell it until june the 15th when it goes actually onto the open market so that their coins are going to be locked in their account um, until right. June the 15th. And uh, and then we imagine quite a few people probably want to sell and take their profits, but um, also at the same time, people want to buy because they want to test it out and use it and, and see what we can do with it. So we expect there to be quite a lot of interest uh, as we like from different uh, cryptocurrency people because no, no one has spent the amount of development time and, and energy that we've been prepared to do because they haven't had really the belief in the system. And I want to give a lot of credit to Tom Miller in Australia, who, who leads the Australian um, meet meetup um, group about Ethereum uh, on the Gold Coast of Australia, oh, sorry, in the Sunshine Coast of Australia. And, and Steve goes to his meetings every week as well. And Tom's a real visionary um, behind the, the currency. And he's got um, this team of developers together and he's leading them um, to develop our coin. And he's been a long term um, friend of mine. Um, for like, for about three years now and uh, we've discussed yeah. the possibilities of doing this for a long time and it's very exciting to see all our planning come to fruition that's <laughs> we've been planning this for, for over a year now so, and, and nathan right. and nathan in arkansas as well to uh to make this happen and uh, obviously it, it doesn't happen overnight because no, no one's ever tried this and we, we didn't even know it was going to work so but it, but it's working which is good good well i mean you brought together a team of people who know like yourself know all about bitcoin we bought people that know about Bitcoin, but also know a bit about internet and uh, and commerce and uh, and social media um, as well. And and uh, this is something that uh, we're a little bit different from other people. Is that uh, the people, um, or due respect to most of the people in the space, is that they're either forex traders or computer programmers, mm -hmm. and they okay. haven't they haven't done a whole lot of e-commerce, which is uh, why no one has really developed a coin like this yet and, and tried it out because they haven't been um, marketers or e-commerce kind of people and 
um, perhaps between um, Tom and myself, we, we had quite a, a wide range of experience. Um, I've been a lawyer for quite a long time, so these contracts that I'm talking about, writing these contracts, is kind of natural for yeah. me to think like this and uh, and to make these contracts. I used to be a shipping insurance lawyer, so we had to make contracts into the future determined on ships arriving at different ports at different times. Payments were held back when the ship didn't get there in time. Payments were increased if they if they um, came ahead of deadline, um, this kind of yeah. thing. So we had to write write similar contracts to this to trigger um, bonus payments or penalty payments. So this is very much like the smart contract system on, on the blockchain. So I, I had quite a lot of experience doing this. And also I had quite a lot of experience um, with the social media and with um, different technologies and things over the years. And and, and so is Tom. The, the thing I haven't had experience with is leading a team of programmers, um, but he has had that with his own um, with his own business before. So uh, it's it's been um, yeah kind of a dual effort to get this coin together. Oh yeah, 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 indeed. Right. If anybody has any questions, then just type forward slash Q and send the message to the bottom right hand side. Um, and uh, Michael's been watching that, and I'm watching it too. I imagine right, it. If I anybody... imagine it's a it's a pretty radical concept for people to uh, to get their head around this kind mm. of thing that uh, someone first can create a currency and and control the price of it for a while, and then put it on the open market. And uh, basically, basically, we can release as many of our coins as we like. Um, okay. And uh, th that is a little bit different from Bitcoin, where there's a limited amount, and they're actually doing mining. Well, we're not doing mining or anything like that. With Ethereum, it doesn't actually work like this. So we um, we can release as many of our coins as we want, but we don't want to do that because we want to um, have a stable price, and uh, the more coins that are released, the less stability there's going to be. So slowly we'll release the coins but the only way that we're going to be able to release the coins um you think oh you can just make as much money as you like or well, it doesn't actually work like that because if we have too many coins um we, we won't be able to back up the price and it'll just crash down to be at one cent again because people will okay. sell them all so we we actually are basing everything that we're doing on the crowdify platform and the different services and and things that we are we're going to do and if I can just speak for a minute about what we're going to do sure. about the equity crowdfunding thing, which was was more yeah. of a crowdified concept right at the start, and um, so um, yeah, Stephen said yeah, the cargo chain just won a um, hackathon with the American Ethereum smart contract for shipping. I've been studying this too; it's extremely interesting. So what what we're going to do? Um, I, I guess you know a little bit about equity crowdfunding. That uh, a little bit, yeah. So um, a new startup um, business wants to raise money. Um, traditionally, on the Kickstarter or Indiegogo or something, that that's called reward crowdfunding. Usually, where where maybe they sell um, their product at a discounted price or something like that, and someone goes in and pays fifty dollars and they buy a, a I don't know some some new kind of water bottle or something like that that's never been yeah. used before, something like this. And that keeps the water like you know clean or something forever, something like this. So the with the equity crowdfunding, the people can also pay their fifty dollars or something like that, but they wouldn't get a reward initially. But they might go into a group of say a thousand people who buy five percent of the business, and okay. um, yeah. and uh, so they're, they're backing that the business is going to succeed, and they want to take an interest in how it develops and. And this gets people interested in um, the, what's behind the business and how the business is progressing. And they usually come in and give it some support, either with social media support or introducing it to their friends or net, um, introducing their network and say the, the company needs a new designer or somebody who's got some equity in the company, even though it's a really tiny little slice. They might say, oh, I know this great graphic designer who will work you know, for, for not so much money to help design the product or something like this. So basically sourcing a huge amount of um, supporters. And there's a thing called Crowdcube and crowdcube.com in the UK. It's had over $80 million of investment into it, um, including, including a huge amount from the UK government, which has been a, a great source of uh, funding and support for a lot of UK startups. And in Europe and the UK, this has been a very popular um, concept of raising money and raising support for, for some time, but hasn't been popular in America and no, no one really knows why, but only six states actually are allowing equity crowdfunding at, at different kind of levels of uh, okay. at, at the moment. So um, I'm not even sure if Australia allows it. I don't think New Zealand allows it, but 
some countries allow it. So we are going to have two different um, systems of um, crowdfunding in our site, the reward crowdfunding and the equity crowdfunding. But what we're going to do is that when people make a transaction in our site with the Crowdify coin, we're going to do a thing. It's going to be like a little bit like a tax, and um, we're going to take 10% off every transaction. But we're not going to keep that 10%. We're going to put that into a different wallet, and it's going to be called an investor coin in, inside mm -hmm. our site. So you're going to hold an investor coin. And if you um, don't use that coin that month, you're going to lose it. Okay. All right? Yep. So this is going to force you to take an interest in the campaigns that we're running to support the different startups, and you can invest in a, a portion of them with that coin and, and take a tiny little bit of equity in those startups with, with, your, with the, your investor coin that has been kind of taxed off you by doing transactions with the Crowdify coin. Can you understand how it, like we're doing this? So yep. uh, yep. if, we, if we didn't do it this way, people would just say back, oh, I'm not interested in doing any crowdfunding or anything like that. I won't do anything. And these, these campaigns may not get so supported. But if people are going to lose them by the end of the month, if they don't, um, uh, don't use them, we, we feel that this will create an incentive for them to take an interest in the campaigns and shovel some of their money towards the campaign. And when they do that, we will redeem that tax money back for um, actual real fiat currency to the startup. So we'll be buying back those investor coins automatically when that happens, at, at, when those people decide to do the, the equity crowdfunding. Okay. So yeah, yeah. yeah, this is the cunning plan for um, helping startups, basically, is, uh, and sort of goes full circle back to what we wanted to do at the start. So it's been a yep. long and long and woolly process to get to this point but i think we'd, we've done it in a much more clever and interesting and effective way by coming around the circle right okay just going back to uh, crowdfund coin for a moment we've got a question huh. from skip yeah. uh, does that mean you'll buy back crowdfund coin to keep the price up if needed yeah we'll, we'll uh yeah we, we we back it to uh, buy it back at any time you want it's full money back guarantee all the time on the coin yeah okay, we're, it, okay. So while we're selling these coins at the moment, like I sold, um, I've been selling a few thousand dollars worth of these coins every day. Yeah. We've actually been, been putting quite a lot of it. I've got like different wallets that they all go, that the money is all going into. Mm -hmm. See, so with uh, Coinbase, you can, on the Coinbase wallet, um, which is the most popular um, cryptocurrency wallet or Bitcoin wallet, you can create as many different wallets as you like inside your own account. And this is this is a uh, Coinbase. This has had over 150 million dollars of um, venture capital investment, mainly from, um, ironically, the um, the guys that actually um, invented the browser, Andreessen and Horowitz. Okay. And um, that they actually invented the browser back in the 80s, and now they are the leading investors in the blockchain technology. Could you believe it? There's right. a, a venture capital company. They're kind of futurists, these guys, right? So what we're doing is what we're doing is funneling. Um, most of the money is going into development for site development of Crowdify and design development and paying our support staff and customer service staff, this kind of thing. But we are also keeping a, a fighting fund of um, Bitcoin to be able to buy um, back when people sell our coin. So um, we, we're, we're keeping a quarter of it at the moment to, to do that. Skip. Okay. So um, this is how we devised a system that should be pretty much foolproof to uh, so this is, I think, that what the um, the original idea of these um, currencies was that they were backed by gold. So we're actually backing our coin with Bitcoin. If you, if it, it's a little bit like um, backing your coin with gold, our coin is going to yeah. be always always backed. So we've always got enough Bitcoin in reserve to be able to buy back however much people want to sell. So we, we just keep that all in reserve there. So. Right. Yeah, I understand that. Right. Okay. Well, that's been fascinating. Um, I think we've and, been and a, a lot, of, a lot of the ideas that we've had have come from Empire Revenue, right? So, yeah, um, that for example, we're going to have a shop in our site that uh, that people can sell their services and things like this, and uh, we're also going to have a, a point system, um, a little bit like Clout and Empire Revenue to create some interest in our. Um, Things, but we're actually going to use this locally in our in our site. So actually, we're going to facilitate um, in real life meetings um, in London and uh, in different in, in different cities around the world. So we're going to find out who the most influential people. And when you go into our site, you'll see that you can 
choose one of about 10 different technology topics like you can choose right, okay. crypt cryptocurrency or clean technology or programming or something like that as your favorite topic so what we want to do is find out say who the most influential 50 people about clean technology are in london and invite them along to an event where a startup might speak um, about their um, new clean technology product or someone who's um, been successful in the clean technology space they will come along and be a speaker People will network there. Um, if someone wants to launch a new product or something like this, um, and they want to do uh, like an influencer marketing campaign, we're going to be able to tell them who the influencers are and get them along to meetups in, in different cities. So we've taken the idea of the influence score from Klaus and Empire Cred and, and different places, but we've localized it and um, and made it subject related. So there's there's two extra extensions on top of what they did and um for uh so perhaps no one's ever done this before so as you know i've been heavily involved in empire cred from day one and i also was heavily involved in the development of the clout as a um as part of a thing called the clout squad i, I formed this thing called the clout squad quad that uh helped um be a kind of strategic um feedback service for clout when they were developing their coin so we um yeah like stephen says we, we have a sunshine um Coast um, Crowdify um, group and uh, and someone will be the manager of that city and, and we'll run meetings about different technology during the week. Like we're going to have a thing called New Money Mondays, which will talk about cryptocurrency on Mondays around the world and at different places and different you know different times. And we have a clean tech um, Thursday or something like this, like different days where different meetings are happening and maybe some of these will be broadcast on something like Blab, where where people okay. can watch online as well. So it's uh, and then at those meetings, if a startup comes and speaks, we will have the facility with our investing program the, um, with the equity crowdfunding that people in the room can go, well, wow, heck, this is a great idea. Let's all do some equity crowdfunding of this great idea and let's raise fifty thousand dollars for them or something. Mm -hmm. How many investor coins have you got in Crowdify at the moment? And people put up their hands. Oh, I've got a thousand dollars worth. I've got two thousand dollars worth. They'll be able to get um, perhaps some funds together even that day, and people watching from around the world, they'll be able to chip in and have kind of a thermometer thing going on and to, to reach the target of where the startup wants to get to with people with their investor coins. And kaboom, they they raise their fifty thousand dollars. They've given away five percent of their company or something like that, and they're on their way to uh, success. So this is um, this is what we're hoping to facilitate. Exciting times. I wish you every success, Michael. Uh, with Crowdify and Crowdify Coin and all the ventures that you're launching. Uh, yeah. and I'm, I'm really grateful to uh, to you for um, this chance to uh, speak about this and I understand it's going to be recording. So, um, yeah, well, if you'd like, if you'd like to. Your, your, question, uh, your questions have been excellent and the questions that you've asked Skip and, uh, and everyone else. Um, and Je um, Omar is uh, asking now if it's like the DAO. It's very hard to explain the DAO <laughs> in two or three minutes. Uh, Omar, but it, it is similar because we are going to have apps that are going to be built um, around the, uh, the, the, the that app system as well. So that's a whole new subject to talk about. The Ethereum apps are also different, Stephen. They're not like the traditional sort of mobile right. phone apps and things. So. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much. We're really grateful. And okay. uh, thanks, everyone who's listened in. And uh, I'll, I'll embed this in a blog post tomorrow because your questions have been great. And it's been a great chance to explain everything we're doing. So. My pleasure. I've learned a great deal, Michael. And thank you to everybody who's joined us today. I've no doubt uh, that we've enjoyed this so much that Michael and I will be back uh, in a month or two uh, as we keep track of the Crowdify project. Uh, thank you to everybody who's asked questions and to everybody who's watched. You can catch the replay uh, shortly. Uh, and next time we have a session, people, because this was this was explaining everything. The next time we have a session, you can come on camera and ask questions live. Thank you, everyone. And goodbye awesome. for now. Thank you.